What's up, Marvel Maniacs? Toy Insanity bringing the Marvel Monday at you. One week after Endgame. Did you see Endgame yet? Okay, spoiler alert, because I'm probably going to talk about the movie again a lot. I saw it last Monday, so, you know, three days after its release. But I wanted to see it on Marvel Monday. Great movie. Very exciting. So I found Bull's Eye Toy shifting gears on us. I mean, they, Bullseye Toy did the did dog tags. They used to be the thing. They did, you know, I think they did some trading cards and stuff. But they were, you know, they're not the main trading card developer. But they did the dog tags. And I used to collect the dog tags. I collected the dog tags for, I don't think they did, they, I think they debuted with Marvel at Avengers 1, 2012. I collected the full set. It was an amazing experience. Just like, you know, Avengers 1 was an amazing movie. And then I collected Bullseye Toy uh, dog tags for Iron Man 3. Anyway, at some point they fell off. No more dog tags. But they're back at us with these packs that have a coin and a patch. And it looks like there's 10 combos. My store, my target, literally had 9 packs. Phew. Sorry about that, Mr. Stark. I don't feel so good. I love you, 3000. All right, but check it out. $6 a pack. Tell me they're in pairs. Tell me this is Hawkeye. Hawkeye. 7 of 10. The Hawkeye Challenge Coin. Well, what is the challenge? What does that even mean? Ten to collect. So I got a dope Hawkeye patch and a Hawkeye Coin. You knew Hawkeye was going to be one of the main characters in Endgame because he was completely absent from Infinity War. You knew it. Hawkeye. Love the scene with Hawkeye and Natasha, you know, trying to decide who should sacrifice themselves, you know, and Natasha wins because Clint, despite going through that Ronin phase and just murking people right and left in Mexico and Japan and who knows where else, uh, you know, he gets to live because he's got a family. All right, pack number two. Is that Iron Man? Iron Man challenge coin. Looks kind of weird. Nice. That's a nice high quality patch. And I dig this coin. I dig this setup. $6. It's kind of what you'd expect. $3 on each of those. But at least they threw us this bone... And they're, they're paired. They're paired correctly. Iron Man. Expect to see here and there some Iron Man tributes in real life. That's my prediction. So you saw the the new Spider-Man trailer. And, uh, you know, like, the people in that universe are kind of like, Oh, Spider-Man, are you going to be the next Iron Man? So we can kind of see where that's going. But you saw all the tributes in the movie. There's going to be some murals. Here and there, in you know your hipster cities, hipster Hulk will commission a mural in Portland or something that will be of Iron Man. Dude, I know where a mural is of Pickle Rick. I'm not even lying. All right, number three. Come on, my dog. Boom, Captain Marvel. All right. I got a uh, a hope for Captain Marvel. I can't say it's a theory because I really doubt they would go this direction. But this is a genius idea that I had. 
over the course of the next couple movies in the MCU. All right. Here's a here's the problem. First of all, the fan base hates Brie Larson. They kind of hate Captain Marvel as a character, but they especially hate the actress. She's just so smug. She's not a good actress. She's so arrogant. And the problem with Captain Marvel as a character is they made her way too super powerful to where she nerfs all the other characters. So here's the direction you take it. And you kind of, because now what are you going to do? You got to just play her off world. It's like, oh, she's unavailable because she would, she would snap Mysterio's neck or whatever these elementals are in no time. So we got to keep her off screen. But you kind of, yeah, I don't know. You tease her a little bit in post credit scenes or something where she's kind of like, she's getting a little Ultron idea, a little Thanos idea of her own. All right. The fan base hates her. She's super powerful as a character. So you take her in the villain territory. All right. So she becomes a worthy villain. And I think Brie Larson could even pull it off, you know, like a Kate Blanchett or something. So maybe three movies from now, you don't you don't make her the focus. But by the time she's the focus again, she's actually a big bad. She's a boss villain. So, and then, obviously, then, the heroes prevail. The heroes that she previously nerfed, whoever the Avengers are at that time, take her out permanently. But she did have her day in the sun. She had her day in the spotlight as a worthwhile, worthy villain to the Avengers. That's all I got to say about Ms. Marvel, Veers, Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. Pardon my rambling, but wouldn't that be an amazing idea? I think at the end of the day, at the, when, when all is said and done, and we're at the end of phase five or six or whatever, people would be like, they would look back and be like, oh yeah, Brie Larson, she was cool. I hated that. I hated her first character, and she would just ex machina out of the blue and save the day because she was ultra super, like over 9,000 levels powerful. But when she became a villain, oh, I was down with it. But you know what I'm saying. She gets that Loki idea, that Thanos idea, that Ultron idea. All of a sudden, she's like... I mean, I guess you could go this way. She's corrupted by something else. But then it's like, oh, it's not really her action. If she's corrupted by Apocalypse or Galactus or something, it's like, oh, she's just a tool of a bigger bad guy. No, you got to have her think, you know, humanity or at least those pesky Avengers. I don't like them. Anyway, Thanos was right, and now we have a whole other problem on Earth. I said it in my last video, because all these other people showed up. Captain America, 2 of 10. Very awesome patch. I'll tell you what I gotta say about Steve Rogers right now. How about this? How about his little escapade returning? Why did it take, like, 8 people... To go on the time heist to get those stones to, you know, remake the gauntlet and everything. But then, you know, Captain America on his own, he just returned them all. I want to see that story. Because I don't think it went down like that. You know, they think he's this great, righteous guy and uncorruptible. But you see his little sneak face there in the end when he looks like Clint Eastwood saying, Nah, nah, brah, I don't think I'm going to tell you that story. He had some fun with those time stones, you know, Infinity Stones. He did, he went on his own time heist. First of all, that's my theory, and that would be fun to play around with in the MCU. Because like I said, first of all, he comes back full of secrets. Full of secrets. Captain America, glad there's no duplicates so far. Oh, no, you can open these and reseal them. So 
you can open it. Goodness. Much like that, and you would put him in face up. Ant-Man. Concerning Endgame. I said this in my last video. It's basically just that stupid rat. I hate that everything that took place in the movie and all the incredible moments that we shared together as viewers rest on the randomness. The apparent randomness, I don't know. Maybe that was Loki or something. That's, I don't know, that's a stupid theory. But the stupid rat just randomly letting Scott out of the thing. I would much rather have Scott in the storyline have Scott have figured out how to get there. Especially since they recreate the technology and reuse the technology all throughout the movie. It's like boom, boom. And that could be the actual justification for five years. It took it took Ant Man five years to figure out how to get out of the quantum realm. Hey, but now, guess what? Bruce Banner, guess what? Tony Stark, guess what? Now I know how to go back there. And I know about, you know, the the Mobius band time loop and everything. Let's go back and do this. It took me five years to figure it out. Whatever, right? No, 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 no. It took five years for a rat to walk across a button? Dude, I hate that scene. No one else is calling it out like I am. But otherwise, why did it really take five years? We were just randomly waiting for him to get back. And see, if they hadn't included the five-year part, all the consequences that Earth now faces by having the vanished people, the pre they, need to, they need to worry for these vanished people because they're going to be stigmatized, all right? All these people disappeared. You moved on. New family, new job, new life, new structure to society. Boom, they're back. They're just back, and they haven't aged. And now you get to deal with all these people that are back, that are like zombies. They're like ghosts. It's basically like, why are you back? Where did you go? Those people are going to be ostracized. First of all, they have they have no answers. It just felt like a nap. Are you kidding me? Anyway, we could have had the whole story where it's like, you know, the snap was already, the snap only lasted like a month or something. And they figured it out and brought people back. Or maybe they didn't bring everyone back. Maybe they could have just brought the heroes back. Earth is in shambles now. And I tell you what, all the people come back, you're not, you're not taking a European vacation. Because society is falling apart again. We just recovered. We just recuperated. And now everyone's back. This is dangerous. I gotta quit rambling. But I hope you appreciate it. I hope you give it a thumbs up. I was thinking about doing movie reviews of movie reviews. Because some of these reviewers have a lot of followers. Say some dumb stuff. I just want to join them in saying dumb stuff. Nebula, oh gosh, don't get me started. Nebula just comes with an Avengers patch. Maybe that is wrong since there's a Guardians patch. That's probably going to come with a rocket. But Nebula <coughs> messes up the whole thing. All the conflict with having to kill Thanos twice in the same movie is because of Nebula. This is horrible. Nebula had information... Nebula goes to, uh, whatever, Sakaar, whatever the, the planet was that Star-Lord was on. Peter J. Sequil is on here, trying to get the blah, 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 and boom, and she shows up with Rhodey, and is just like, we're not the only ones here. Yeah, bro, yeah, you could have told us that. You could have told all of us that, you know? So, look, here's the thing. <coughs> Excuse me, Nebula. Me Nebula messed everything up. No one's really calling her out, man. She didn't tell them. Remember, okay, okay, the whole story with Vormir. She told them afterwards. Is like, no, it's true. Uh, and it, you know, Natasha's gone forever because you know Gamora didn't come back in the earth. You didn't tell us this story before. Anyway, concerning the way they allocated that time heist, it was a mistake on everyone's part. It was probably a mistake to even trust Nebula, but to send her to the planet to take out 
uh, Peter Jason Quill, Star-Lord. Bad idea. Black Widow should have gone there. Nebula should have gone to Vormir, let's say, with Hawkeye. All right, because she had some knowledge about that, too. Now, maybe she wouldn't have been the one to sacrifice herself as far as suicide, but Clint was ready to do it anyway. So Clint, Clint kills himself. Nebula, showing that she's really worthy of everyone's trust, brings back the Soul Stone. Meanwhile, meanwhile, there's no one on that other planet, Sakaar or whatever, there's no one on that planet with cybernetic interface to screw things up. In like six or seven different ways, Nebula screwed up the whole plan. And they all should have realized she was the Achilles heel. She was going to be the problem. But of course, without her as a problem and the stupid rat hitting a button, we wouldn't have had that movie. But for all, I got to quit rambling. But I've thought about it a lot, like, like a lot of people have in the last week. Rocket Challenge Coin, 8 of 10, Rocket Raccoon. The sad thing about this collection is I don't get a Groot coin. And there's the Guardians patch. Rocket. Great. Fine in the movie. Yay. Yay, Rocket. <laughs> Gotta quit rambling. Alright, we got two more. There she is. I'm looking at how the coin has some flaws up there around the 2 o'clock position. See that? But we get Black Widow. I mean, I was fine with the Black Widow outcome, you know, from the story writing standpoint. I guess that's what they had to do. But, you know, come on. They could have thought about it as Avengers, as heroes. Also, they could have thought about getting them pin particles from the jump. But they could have thought about sending, switching Black Widow and Nebula. Just saying. Just saying. Nebula makes it on the front? I guess. I guess. It's critical to this movie. Dude, come on. I get a duplicate after all. Probably the worst one. So I need uh, Thor. Where's Hulk? Oh, they didn't do Hulk? They didn't do Hipster Hulk coin? I need Thor and Thanos. Dude. Alright, I got Captain Marvel twice. And I need... Thor and Thanos. Dude, why did they do Hulk? I'm, dude. I might not have got these at all if I had realized Hulk wasn't in it. I didn't even think about it. See how they don't actually list out the names? And I didn't really study those tiny images. Alright, Toy Insanity, thanks for watching this video. Thank you for the upvote. Thank you for the subscription. Thank you for all your kind words. This video is too long. Too long. All right. But hopefully you didn't have to pee in your soda bottle while watching this video. Because it wasn't three hours long. Toy Insanity, the Big Blues, boom, bye. 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 Marvel Monday, bye.